crack and drive plane to launch crack and drive rocket <laughs> i guess i could try to design something that can carry a rocket but i don't trust this game i don't trust the game to be able to handle it and the design process is going to take a while we can definitely try all right so let me let me take a jab at it we're going to try and do something fun and cool Yes, we are going to attempt a cargo plan. We're going to attempt to fly a rocket into the upper atmosphere, detach said rocket in the upper atmosphere, fire off said rocket, and then reach orbit, and then deorbit. I'm thinking very hard about this design right now. If you leave SAS on, the pilot may try to stay stable. Yeah. I have a fair amount of faith in, in Jeb. <laughs> so i think what happened was okay because i we can't look at the center of mass because we dropped the rocket i don't even know where it went at this point i don't know how to switch but what happened is because we dropped the rocket the center of mass is now much farther back yeah the center of mass is back here now but yeah i don't think i did create a new career Let's quit to main menu. I want to make a, a f completely fresh career save. I think we're going to go with the Osprey for more variability in how we can set the center of gravity using fuel tanks. The biggest challenge is after you release the payload, you lose that mass, right? No duh. But what does that mean? It means that your center of mass changes and it means that your plane which was once stable is no longer stable you need to design this thing in a way that makes it so once you release the payload the plane is still stable and that's difficult
Seems pretty stable on the runway. Um. 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 Uh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's because the landing gear are so far behind the center of mass. That's why. <laughs> We're kind of bouncing. Eh, it's okay. We have the payload and we are flying. So and we have a lot more fuel this time because we added these two tanks here. All right, we're going pretty slow now, so we got to be careful. Yeah, let's switch. Yeah, we have large control surfaces because this thing needs to be stable at a very high altitude. All right, I'm going to do two. I'm going to activate this control from here. Uh, no vessel control. What? What? Did we forget to? Oh, we forgot to put a fucking. <laughs> we forgot to put a fucking Kerbal in the in the thing. I'm so used to it automatically. Oh, also, uh, it burned all the oxygen out of this tank. Should be a little bit more stable now. Let's hope it. Let's hope it works. This kind of design is a little bit more complicated. Once we reach like a hundred meters per second on the surface, then we got to switch the engines because that means that they are, yeah, see nominal at 65. So we may as well just switch them now. Now we got to push the envelope. All right, I think we're starting to get there. So I'm going to cut it. I'm going to decouple. I'm going to press three. I'm going to activate this. It's not controlling from there. I don't know how to get it to control from there. I, I press control from there. Yeah, observer can't leave active vessel. But we did it and we would be burning right now from that. I can't right click it and control it. So I don't know based on the and then it just disappeared. So we had it though. We had it. The thing was loose in the cargo bay. Because it would be cool to get this thing to work. I just don't know how to switch to the other the other vehicle. Alright, I am attempting my first voiceover. And I'm watching the video currently right now. I went on to try to make another design using truss structures. And had very little luck using these connectors. I tried to make a design that had an open center so I could attach a payload to it, but it turns out that these connections are unstable and these trusses are also very heavy. But it was worth my time because I learned a lot. I cannot have such a giant mass in the tail in order to compensate for the lack of mass in the front of the aircraft. It simply leads to serious instability and strain on the joints of the aircraft. I realize that the tail is too heavy and is causing serious instability issues. So you can see here that I switch out the tail, I move the landing gear a little bit farther back, and it's relatively stable, but two of the landing gear break off. I am able to take off with it, but then I decide to scrap the project. So I attempt a similar design here, but this time instead of using the truss structures, I actually use wings to attach the fuel tanks to the center cockpit. I, I was able to get it relatively stable, even though the center of mass was slightly off center. Uh, the wings with struts were very strong and much lighter, as you can imagine compared to trusses. And the wings instead of trusses provide some lift in the center of the aircraft. So there isn't a huge strain weighing down in the middle of the aircraft. My first couple attempts were obviously uh, failed attempts, but through this process, I learned a lot. So here I add some more struts to the center because the aircraft broke in half when I tried to pull up because of the force on, on the center area and we had our first successful flight with this design uh it was slightly unstable still 
but this is the design we end up sticking with and we were able to attach a rocket as a payload to the center connected by struts and a fuel line to make sure that it didn't run out of fuel uh, that the engines didn't drain fuel from the center rocket before it was detached uh, and we made it a cool color so this design was by far the more successful design much more aerodynamic lighter more efficient and we actually found out how to switch to the rocket. So it's a little bit of a quirky situation, but what you have to do is only have one Kerbal in the vessel. You control the vessel from the rocket that you're detaching from the airplane that you're gonna put into orbit, and you leave the main airplane unmanned so that you can easily detach and then control the rocket that you're that you just detached as the controlled vessel so we have some unsuccessful attempts clearly but we finally get the aircraft stable with the payload making sure that the fuel is being drained into the rocket and we have some issues controlling the rocket because we didn't understand that we needed to only have one Kerbal in the vessel at a time. And we had some weird issues with our camera where it couldn't figure out which one to control. But we eventually find out that if you have one Kerbal in the vessel, it will switch you automatically to the rocket uh, with the Kerbal in it and you leave the airplane empty. And as you can see here, we changed the rocket payload out for a larger rocket with a mainsail engine because our previous smaller rocket didn't have the Delta V that it needed to to get into orbit. But we finally got to the point in which we we moved the wings slightly because the vessel pancake and we needed to make it stable again in this final attempt we're able to get the rocket over 10,000 meters into the air and then we were able to uh with just one kerbal decouple the rocket from the plane and then fire off the rocket and get it into orbit successfully and then deorbit the rocket successfully after many attempts. It was a very good feeling to get this finally functional and very stable. So I'm happy that we were able to just swap out the small rocket for a larger rocket in the center. And the airplane technically would have been able to stabilize itself and land but because of the nature of the game, it just disappears after you detach from it. So there's not much to be done about that. But we successfully complete one orbit and then we deorbit and we splash down successfully with Valentina Kermit. So we have completed the weekly challenge for this week.